He just kept trying to submit his verse. At night, he would go as far as the fifth patriarch's hall, peer around, break out the inner sweat, and flee back to his room. During the day, he tried again. In the periods in between, he could not sit, lie down, or sleep. And when he tried to eat, he couldn't swallow. He went before the patriarch's hall thirteen times and still did not submit the verse. Now. When I give you a quiz, you write the answers very promptly, promptly, and hand them in. Suppose I was to give you a patriarch test. I think your hands would tremble so that you couldn't write out the answers. Finally, after so many attempts, when Shen Xiao had almost worried himself to death, he thought, "Hey, get hold of yourself. Calm down and think this thing over. Meditate and enter samadhi." Sutra. Then he thought, "This is not as good as writing it on the wall, so that the high master might see it suddenly. If he says it is good, I will come forward, bow, and say, 'Xiao did it.' If it does not pass, then I have spent my years on this mountain in vain, receiving veneration from others. And as to further cultivation, what can I say? That night, in the third watch." Holding a candle, he secretly wrote the verse on the wall of the south corridor to show what his mind had seen. Commentary: That's it, he said with relief. I will write it on the wall, and when he sees it, he will say, "This is truly a fine verse, truly wonderful," and he will admit that I wrote it. But if he says that this is too confused. It is nothing but useless trash. Then I will know that I have wasted my time here on the mountain. He crept stealthily, like a thief in the night. He carried just a little candle, for if the light were too bright, someone might have seen him. Sutra. Verse: The body is like is a body tree. The mind, like a bright mirror stand, tam and again brush it clean, and let no dust alight. After writing this verse, Shen Xiu returned to his room, and the others did not know what he had done. Then he thought, if the fifth patriarch sees the verse tomorrow, and is pleased, it will mean that I have an affinity with the drama. If he says that it does not pass. It will mean that I am confused by heavy karmic obstacles from past lives, and that I am not fit to obtain the drama. It is difficult to fathom the sage's intentions. In his room, he thought it over and could not sit or sleep peacefully right through to the fifth watch. Commentary: He bounded back to his room two steps at a time, as if he were being chased. But quietly, taking great silent leaps like an expert military spy, he was afraid that if anyone saw him, they would know he wrote the verse. But no one saw him. No one knew, not even the ghosts and spirits. If he writes this verse, thought Shen Xiao, then I must have connections with the wonderful might-to-might seal of the Buddhas, and it is my destiny to be patriarch. But if it does not pass. My confusion from the karma created in the past lives, in past lives, must be a heavy obstruction. It is hard to figure out what he will say. There is just no way to know. Actually, his verse was not bad, but he had not fully understood. So after he returned to his room, he was still uneasy. Sutra, the patriarch already knew that Shen Xiao had not yet entered the gate, and seen his own nature. At daybreak, the patriarch called court artist Lu Chen to fresco the wall of the south corridor. Suddenly, he saw the verse and said to the court artist, "There is no need to paint. I am sorry that you have been wearied by coming so far, but the Diamond Sutra says whatever has marks is empty and and false. Instead, leave this verse for people to recite and uphold." Those who cultivate in accordance with this verse will not fall into the evil destinies and will attain great merit. He then ordered the disciples to light incense and bow before it, and to recite it. 
thus enabling them to see their own nature. The disciples all recited it and exclaimed, Excellent! Commentary, if you cultivate according to the principles contained in this verse, said the fifth patriarch, you will not fall into rebirth in the three rival paths of the house, animals or hungry ghosts, and you will receive many benefits. Sutra At the third watch, the patriarch called Shen Xiu into the hall and asked him, Did you write this verse? Shen Xiu said, Yes, in fact, Xiu did it. He doesn't dare claim to the position of patriarch, but hopes the high master will be compassionate and see whether or not this disciple has a little bit of wisdom. The patriarch said, The verse which you wrote shows that you have not yet seen your original nature, but are still outside the gate. With such views and understanding, you may seek a supreme body, but in the end will not obtain it. Supreme body must be obtained at the very moment of speaking, in recognizing the original mind at all times in every thought, you yourself will see that the 10,000 dramas are unblocked. In one truth is all truth and 10,000 states are of themselves thus as they are. The thusness of the mind just that is true reality. If seen in, that, in this way, it is indeed the self-nature of suffering body. Commentary, the patriarch chose the same hour at which Shen Xiu had written the verse on the wall, wall the night before. He secretly called him in and said, Psst, was it you who wrote that verse? Yes, yes, Shen Xiu whispered back. Yes, in fact, I, Xiu, wrote it. I do not dare seek the status of the patriarch, but your verse shows that you are still an outsider, said the fifth patriarch. You have not yet seen your nature. As soon as you speak the words, know your original nature. When you understand the mind and see your nature, you know that the nature is not produced and not destroyed, for at all times all dhammas are perfectly fused without the slightest bit of obstruction. There is no place where all dhammas are not identical. When you understand one truth, all truth is understood. The 10,000 externals are all produced from the state which is thus unmoving, and within the mind which is thus, thus unmoving, true reality is to be found. Seen in this way, this state is the original nature exactly. It is the highest enlightenment. And so, in response to Shen Xiu, I wrote a verse myself. Because of the way 10,000 things are born, one who obtains it punishes the mystery oneself. Awakened, the basic substance is fathomed. Body does not decrease or de increase. Sutra, go and think it over for a day or two. Compose another verse and bring it to me to see. If you have been able to enter the gate, I will transmit the rope and drama to you. Shen Xiu made obeisance and left. Several days passed, but he was unable to compose a verse. His mind was agitated and confused, and his thoughts and mood was un were uneasy. He was as if in a dream, whether walking or sitting down, he could not be happy. Commentary After the great master had explained that the body self nature cannot be sought with the mind that wants to take advantage of things. He told Shen Xiu, if you obtain the original substance, become enlightened and understand the mind and see your self-nature, enter in the gate of the Buddha Dharma so that you are no longer on the outside. I will transmit the Dharma to you. Enter the gate means understand the mind and see your own nature. As the days passed, Shen Xiu gradually went insane. Neither his mood nor his thoughts would calm down. Although he was unable to fall asleep, he was as if in a dream. He didn't know what he was doing because his desire to become patriarch was so great. I believe that after he failed the initial test and then was unable to compose another verse, he even considered suicide. 
Sutra. Two days later, a young boy chanting that verse passed by the thresh, uh, threshing room. Hearing it for the first time, Hui Neng knew that the writer had not yet seen his original nature. Although he had not yet received a transmission of the teaching, he already understood its profound meaning. He asked the boy, What verse are you reciting? Barbarian, you know nothing, replied the boy. The great master has said that birth and death are a profound concern for people in the world, desiring to transmit the rope and drama. He ordered his disciples to compose verses and bring them to him to see. The person who has awakened to the profound meaning will inherit, inherit the rope and drama and become the sixth patriarch. Our senior Shen Xiao wrote this verse with thumb marks on the wall of the South Corridor. The Great Master ordered everyone to recite it, for to cultivate in accord with this verse is to avoid falling into the evil destinies and is of great merit. Commentary A young lady ventured close to the threshing, threshing floor where the sixth patriarch was working, singing as he walked. The body is a body tree, the mind like a bright mirror stand, time and again, time and again brush it clean, let no dust alight. The youth was chanting Shen Xiu's verse because he wished to obtain great benefit over the three evil destinies of rebirth and see his nature. When the sixth patriarch asked the boy what he was reciting, the boy replied, You bar barbarian! Don't you know that the fifth patriarch said that of all the problems people face, the problem of birth and death is the most grave? A verse without marks is one which reveals that its author is not attached to marks. You really have no good rules, the boy said to the sixth patriarch. After so many days, you still don't know? Your ears is capable only of toiling a bitter work. All you can do is pout rice. You shouldn't let such a fun opportunity slip by. Listen closely and I will tell you what has happened and teach you this verse so that you too can become enlightened and see your nature. Pay attention and rely on this verse as you cultivate so that in your next life, You won't have to endure such suffering as you endure now. You won't have to be a horse or a cow or fall in among the other animals or into the house. At the very least, you'll be a wealthy and respected person of good fortune. Your youth's heart wasn't bad at all. Sutra Hui Neng said, I too would like to recite it to create an affinity. Superior one, I have been pounding rice here for over eight months and have not yet been to the front hall. I hope that the, the superior one will lead me before the verse to pay homage. The boy then led him to the verse to bow. Hui Neng said, Hui Neng cannot read. Please, superior one, read it to me. Then an official from Chang Cho named Chang Chi Yung read it loudly. After hearing it, Wei Neng said, I too have a verse. Will the official please write it for me? The official replied, You too can write a verse? That is strange. Commentary The boy said, Listen to me and I will teach you. The body is a body tree. Can you remember that? The mind is like a bright mirror stand. You should remember that. Don't forget. Time again, brush it clean. Let no dust alight. If you remember that verse clearly and study as you chant, you'll certainly receive an efficacious response. Because the late had been so considerate, the Sikh patriarch referred to him as Superior One, a title which is ordinarily reversed, reserved for one's master. People who have left home often call their teachers superior one, acknowledging their high achievement. Then the sixth patriarch said, The layman Hui Neng is truly useless, for he can't read a single word. 
Super real one, would you please recite it for me? Having heard the verse, he said, Well, I have a verse too, but I'm unable to write it. What can I do? Please, good official, layman Chang, will you write it out for me? The official was wide-eyed with surprise. He looked scornfully at the barbarian and said, How you can write a verse? This is very strange. In my whole life, I have never heard an illiterate who can write verses. Sutra Hui Neng said to the official, If you wish to study the supreme body, body, do not slide the beginner. The lowest people may have the highest wisdom. The highest people may have the least wisdom. If you slide others, you create limitless unbounded offenses. The official said, Recite your verse and I will write it out for you. If you attend the Dharma, you must take me across first. Do not forget these words. Hui Neng's verse reads, Originally, body has no tree. The bright mirror has no stand. Originally, there is not a single thing. Where can dust alight? When this verse had been written, the followers all were startled and without exception cried out to one another. Strange indeed, one cannot judge a person by his appearance. How can it be that after so little time he has become a Bodhisattva in the flesh? Commentary Originally, Layman Lu had not planned to say anything, but if he had remained silent, no one would have helped him write a verse. So in reply to the mocking of Layman Chang, the master said, If you wish to study the highest body, do not ridicule those who are studying the Buddha Dharma for the first time. It may well be that those who appear to be the lowest and stupidest have the highest wisdom for those who have truly great wisdom may act as if they have no wisdom at all. No matter what they are asked, they reply, I don't know. This is an example of the great wisdom which is like stupidity. For instance, when I ask a question of my disciples, they often say, I don't know. When they first came to study, they said, I know everything. Once I met a person who said he knew everything, I asked, how can you know everything? If you know all there is to know, I'll ask you a question. He said, what is your question? I replied, do you know how many grains of rice you swallowed at lunch today? No, I didn't count them, he admitted. You're not counting, it's just not knowing, I said. Those who do the most manual work often have wisdom excelling that of people in high positions. Then again, those who ordinarily have great wisdom may have times when their wisdom is suffocated by thoughts of desire. Okay, okay said the official. That's right. You certainly speak with principle. Now, what is your verse? Recite it and I will write it out. You don't have to say another word, but you must remember to take me across first because if I don't write your verse, no one will know of it. Originally, body has no tree. Body is just the way of enlightenment and that's all there is to it. How can there be a tree? If there is a tree, body becomes a mere thing, a place of attachment. Originally, body doesn't have anything. If you say you are enlightened, what is enlightenment like? Is it green or yellow? Is it red or white? Can you speak of the appearance of body when it has no appearance? The bright mirror has no stand. You may say the mind is like a bright mirror stand but there is actually no stand at all. If you have a stand, you have placed, you have a place when you can dwell, but you should produce a thought which is nowhere supported. How can you have a stand? If you have a stand, then you have a dwelling place, a place where you are attached. Therefore, the bright mirror has no stand. What is the appearance? No appearance. Originally, there is not a single thing. Basically, there is not at all. No style, no picture, no shape or mark. Originally, there is nothing at all. Where can dust alight? Since there isn't anything, where does the dust come from? 
Basically, you have no dwelling place. The essential meaning of the verse is this: you should produce a thought which is nowhere supported. There should be no attachment at all. This was precisely the Buddha's meaning when, upon coming enlightened, he said, "All living beings have the wisdom and virtuous characteristics of the first come one. It is merely because of false thinking and attachment that they are unable to satisfy to the attainment of them." This was spoken specifically to instruct people to put aside attachment, to produce an unsupported thought. If you are attached, what are you up to, huh? Now you are attached, but in the future you will die or not? What will you be attached to when you die? All the bishops, laymen, and assembled disciples stood in astonishment and whispered among themselves, "Hey, hey! Does he have a verse too? Oh, it's really true. You can't judge people by appearances." This rise. Thrasher, layman Lu, can compose verses. We can no longer slander him and call him a barbarian. Why he hasn't been here very long? They continued. But how can you deny that he's a flesh-bodied bodhisattva? Actually, some were mocking the sixth patriarch, babbling, "Don't look down on him. He's a flesh-bodied body bodhisattva. Perhaps there were a heart in the assembly." Who intentionally made such comments so that people would look clo- closely and clearly recognize that he actually was a flesh bo- body bodhisattva? Again, there were those who said, "This is truly a flesh body bodhisattva," but meant it only as sarcasm and light-hearted ridicule, for they still didn't know if the verse was correct. Everyone was chattering, exchanging comments. Making such a racket, then the fifth patriarch came to the hall and demanded, "What are you doing? What are you up to?" This rice thrasher, this barbarian, can write verses. This stammered. Sutra. The fifth patriarch saw the astonished assembly and feared that they might become dangerous. Accordingly, he erased the verse. With his shrew, saying, "This one too has not yet seen his nature." The assembly agreed. Commentary: The gathering was so excited, the fifth patriarch feared that someone might even try to assassinate Layman Lu. This sentence of text proves that people with twisted hearts, followers of Shen Xiao, were already locked in a fierce battle for positions of power. If the drama and the patriarch, patriarchy were transmitted publicly to anyone other than Shen Xiao, that person would have been murdered on the spot. But they didn't know that the fifth patriarch was a bright-eyed one who read their scheming minds. So, to protect the sixth patriarch, he erased the verse and said, "This man's verse is also incorrect." Perhaps some of you are thinking the fifth patriarch lied. First, he said that if one cultivated in accord with Shen Xiu's words, he would not be subject to the three evil destinies, but would gain great benefit and see his own nature. Then the fifth patriarch told everyone that Lei Min Lu had not really seen his nature, when in truth he had. Isn't that false speech? No, this is a provisional teaching, not false speech. The fifth patriarch spoke to protect a new patriarch. He would not allow the others to harm him. In this way, the Buddha drama could remain long in this world and be transmitted far and wide. Yes, said the followers. He has not seen his nature. Although they agreed, no one knew whether the verse was right or not. This first verse said, "Body is a tree." The second said, "Body has no tree." The first verse said. The bright mirror has a stand, and the second said there is no mirror stand. Which was right? Which was wrong? No one understood. None of them had become enlightened, so they couldn't recognize an enlightened verse. It is like the judging of a doctoral dissertation. 
if you only have a master's degree, you cannot draft a doctoral dissertation. It is the same with the enlightened and the unenlightened. Since they were not enlightened themselves, the followers did not understand, and so they simply agreed with the master and said, No, this one has not yet seen his nature.